Google Pest Control Marketer Grow your business like never before Call 770-993-0004 Well, hello, folks. This is Hal Coleman, and welcome to another episode of Pest Control Marketing Live, the only live streaming internet TV show totally dedicated to helping PCOs and WCOs grow your business, get more customers, and make more money. And I'm here with my sidekick, my mentor, my friend, my buddy, and business partner, Mike Stewart. How you doing, Mike? Oh, I'm great. I'm great. It's a good summer here of 2021. I like to, if I talk about a season, I always like to do a date. That's a little podcast tip. Try to keep things evergreen, but uh, but I, I, I'll tell you what I like about the summer right now. This is kind of marking the beginning of people becoming coming out and uh, getting past this pandemic stuff. <clears throat> oh, man, I'll tell you what, it's uh, it has been a time to look back on. I wonder what we'll, you know, we'll be saying in the future, well, that was pre-pandemic or that was post-pandemic. You know, it's it's, it's, it's going to be a, a, a time marker in the future. Well, you know, I was I was hearing something the other day that uh, uh, hopefully we can expect the second phase of the Roaring Twenties because you know the Roaring Twenties was a result of coming out of the Spanish flu pandemic. You know, uh, the economy seemed to be great, um, and uh, it, it was uh, it was people so glad to get back out again. It became the Roaring Twenties. So let's see if we can avoid the Great Depression of the Thirties. Yeah, no kidding, no kidding. You know, it's. Uh... You look at things a lot differently when your hair is brown than you do when your hair is white. You know, well, you, you t- you're talking about a picture like that, uh, folks on the podcast. That's why you need to watch the live stream. There, there's when Hal's and mine hair was not white. <laughs> yeah, that was in uh, that picture of me was in 1981 or 82, but uh, that's about the time we started working together. Uh, I was a pest control bug guy by day and a music guy by night and on the weekends. And you were full time music guy. And uh, so we hooked up doing jingles. I was singing Willie Nelson sound alikes in, in your home studio and you didn't have a sound booth. So I had to go sit in, in the bathroom and sit on the toilet with a microphone in front of me. That was the sound booth. It was a dang uh, good one. Yeah. It worked. It, it it was kind of magical, wasn't it? It was magical. A lot. Of, in fact, uh, s- some of the famous butts that sat on that toilet were Tommy Rowe, Junior Samples, and Hal Coleman. All three of those famous guys. Uh, Sammy John sat on that toilet. Yeah. Uh, Chevy Van, Sammy John. I was trying Milton to think. Crab, Milton Crabapple sat on it, didn't he? Milton Crabapple sat on it, and and uh, 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 an unknown but lo- beloved artist named Danny Jones sat on that. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine you sat on it a few times too. I'm not singing, no. Oh, okay. okay. I was, re- I was reading, <laughs> reading books and stuff. I was, I was learning about marketing in the beginning. You know. There. Oh, that's funny. You All know, right, well, let's, let's get to this. What's what are we talking about today on today's podcast? Today we about? have a guest. Uh, this is another show I'm really excited about because we have a guest on today. It's just not us talking. And uh, uh, you want me to go ahead and introduce our guest? Please introduce him, and, and I'm going to let you guys do a little bit of an interview here. But we both work with this gentleman. Um, I'm going to put up his website uh, right now. His name is, go ahead, Hal. His name is Fred Talley with Face Pest Control. Fred Fred called me probably over th- about three years ago. Uh, he had attended a couple of my workshops here in the, in the Roswell Alpharetta area, North Fulton. And so I knew who he was. And uh, uh, he called me and said he had been struggling to grow his business. He was kind of, you know, flatlined there. And uh, he wanted to talk about my coaching program. So he got in my coaching program and we, he's not only been a coaching client now for uh, about three years, but he's become a really good friend and he has done really well with his business. I'm really, really proud of him. But uh, I asked him if he would share some of the struggles of how you get from being a person who is just doing it one way and you're getting one result and you you want your business to grow and uh, you don't know how to do it. And it involves embracing 
new ideas, new thought processes, heading in a new direction. And that's what most people struggle with. I struggle with it, Mike. You struggle with it. Everybody struggles with change. You know, our subconscious mind that I call Elmo hates change and he will trick you, deceive you, manipulate you, lie to you, stab you in the back, do whatever he has to do to keep you from changing your routine. And so like you and I, Fred, struggle with that some and and like we all do still does. But Fred has done a great job of embracing changes and adapting uh, to new ideas. And and so with further idea, I know he's got uh, further ado. Uh, I know he's got some stories to share. So uh, let's bring Fred on. And Hi. There he is. Hey, Fred. How are y'all? I'm doing great. And uh, I guess you heard my my intro. And I so uh, I know that uh, the folks who are watching are interested in hearing from you. And in the future, you know, this 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 podcast will be listened to by a lot of people from now on. So anything that you could share with them that would be helpful to them about transforming your business into a growth mode. OK, well, everything that Hal said, uh, as far as I can remember, is true. Although I thought I thought we started in 2017, maybe it was 2018, but that's kind of immaterial anyway. Yeah. Uh, probably one of the first things that I, in our first actual official coaching meeting that Hal said to me that has really uh, stuck It wasn't a light bulb moment when he said it, but it eventually became a light bulb moment. But he said, my, my, my job is to make you feel comfortable being uncomfortable. And I I don't think any truer words could be said about that. Uh, You know, by, by day I'm forced to be an extrovert, but by night I'm very introverted. So sometimes it's a struggle for me to meet people and talk to them well but based on his, you know, his statement about making me feel comfortable being uncomfortable, it made complete sense. Although I think he meant totally different thing, not just the meeting people, but I, I kind of embraced that idea. He, I've never even shared this with him. I kind of embraced that idea when I have to go, had to go meet people. So now it, 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 I am a lot more comfortable with it, but I'm still an introvert. <laughs> by yeah. nature uh well you were you were uh uncomfortable when you first started made your first videos you were uncomfortable doing that you were uncomfortable using some of the sales scripts that i came up with for you you were uncomfortable for just flat out asking people to sign on the dotted line right. you know right. you were just uh, you, you've made so many changes that it's, it's pretty incredible, really. Uh, you're, you have become a, uh, an absolute fantastic salesperson and, and a businessman and manager. And, uh, you were a bug guy when we first started working together and you're a businessman now with a, with a fast growing pest control business. The, the, that, that is correct. Cause I, I was a one man operation. Uh, you know, if I knew then what I know now, I would have probably approached things a lot different, but, but I thought that I needed to understand everything about killing bugs and and reality of it is killing bugs is an awful small, small part of what we, what we really do. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I struggled with the, with the thought of growing, uh, you know, with hiring employees, I, I, you know, got kind of got pushed in that direction more by familial circumstances. Cause now at, at this point I have two of my children that work with me and uh, you know, my focus is different now and that I, I need to leave something for them that can sustain them financially. If, if that's what they want to do. Mm. But it, it, you know, if they decide and that right now is, is what they want to do. But if they decide in the next 10 years, that that's not what they want to do. I will still have something I can sell, which I did not have four years ago. Yeah. 
And yeah. just so people know that are listening, when you said your children work for you, it's not a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old. Your children are grown adults. <laughs> oh, yeah, my, my son's 34 and my daughter, well, she's 15 months younger than him. So 33 and some change. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, he'll be actually 34 on Friday. Or, or, and I'll be married 38 years on Friday. So, oh, well, that's great. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you very time. much. But, you know, well, you are building a business that, that you mentioned that to leave behind. Uh, I see a lot of people who, who have businesses, pest control businesses. And so I'm sure this is true with other all under industries too. Um, that, some people are building businesses that aren't going to be sellable when they get ready to sell it. And uh, when people are buying, making an acquisition, they look for certain things, you know, they look for uh, start with, they're going to want to see at least your last two or three years tax returns. And they want to see tons of recurring business, tons of recurring business. They want to see squeaky clean books and, uh, uh, you've really adapted well to that. You've, you've got everything in order and you're building a very, very sellable business. Right. Well, you know, that's was part of <laughs> Hal's coaching program. Now I've been with Hal three or four years, whatever the number is. Uh, I've only been with Mikey for a year. Uh, I believe we just have passed one year or right at the one year mark. Now I've known Mike and been to some seminars that Mike has been co-host with, with Hal. Uh, uh, But Hal or Mike's more of the content guy. He, he harps on me about content and, and, and makes me has actually gotten me more comfortable with that aspect of it which I, I'm still not great on the videos, but uh, I think I do okay on the podcast for you. Yeah, you'd uh, be great with the videos. Yeah. Tell yourself short there. But, I mean, I, we didn't even, Hal and Mike and I didn't even discuss this. So I, don't, I don't really know if I'm supposed to talk about it, and it's nothing bad. But when I started with Hal, as a one man operation, I, I was like, at, I don't know, 115, 115, 120,000 a year. I did acquire, I bought a business right about just before I hired Hal that took me up to about 225 a year. So we're talking about 2018 now. And this year, if I don't, if, if I don't sell anything else this year, which is highly unlikely and just, you know, get all of the recurring, uh, recurring stops that we have caught, we, we will be real close to 550,000. So in, in four, three, four years, we've gone from 225 to 550. And, and now- <clears throat> And now let me tell you, there are, there are some people who would say you you doubled your business in thirty six months, and other people would say, well, you know, I went from a one man operation to twelve million dollars in thirty six months, but you don't know how they got there, and it's and it's uh, that's a totally different different world of. Uh, acquisitions and selling but what we teach you how to do is just grow your your business yourself step by step client by client and and get solid solid long time recurring revenues and lots of happy customers and uh if you double your business every 36 months then it it won't be long before you have a million and a two million dollar and a three million dollar business a right. lot faster than I did. You know, I, I, I started out as a one man operation and I too bought a, a route of, of termite renewals. Uh, the guy was a one man operator. He was not licensed in household pest control, uh, uh, only termite. So from day one, I added the pest control, but I was just a one man with a spray can operation. Uh, 
and I built a million dollar business, but it took me 18 years to do it uh, because I didn't know uh, what I know now. Uh, and there re really wasn't anybody around to teach me uh, really sophisticated, cutting edge, direct response marketing. But uh, so I, 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 I fell into a lot of potholes. I struggled on the one hand. On the other hand, I was only willing to work eight hours a day, five days a week <laughs> because there were uh, there were. Uh, deer and turkeys that needed to be hunted. There were fish that needed to be caught. Uh, and there were golf courses that needed to be played on. And who was going to do it? It had to be me. I mean, you know, somebody's got to take care of all those things. But I had 10 employees at the end and, uh, you know, sold my business uh, because I had started coaching people like you. And it was so rewarding that I just sold my business as 15 years ago and be a coach. So. Uh, something else uh, that I would like to, to share <clears throat> that made a big impact on me and really changed the way that I was thinking, because this whole process for me anyway, has been a a method of changing the way I think about the pest control business. Like I, I was in the beginning, I was focused on killing bugs and now I'm focused on how to grow the business. Uh, you know, I, I, I do get up every day and, and, you know, think, well, what do I need to do today to get another customer? That that's the way my, my mind works now. But one thing that Hal had said, and this is probably, I don't know. This is a couple of three years ago. He said, and this too was not an instant light coming on. It took a little while. Maybe it was on dimmer and he turned the, turned the dimmer switch up, but what he made the comment, he said, when I, when he was in business for himself, he said, I would spend a lot of money to acquire a, a new customer. And, and, uh, you know, we're no work. My business is no different than anybody else's. We have we have a ton of five star reviews. And Mikey, I know that we need to get more, but we've got a lot of five star reviews. But but, uh, you know, we get the we get complaints, too. We're, we're not any different, any better than anybody else. And and I before would kind of shy away from the complaint. You know, if they want to leave, let them leave. And now I, 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 I don't embrace it. I don't like it at all. Matter of fact, I hate it, but I will call the customer up. Uh, if, if they've had a continuous problem and, and I'm not aware of all the, all the callbacks every day. So, you know, I, I will discuss it with them. If they will let me, I will personally go out and fix their problem. Even if they want to switch, it's fine. I just want to fix their problem. I, uh, if if you followed Hal and Mike very long at all, you know the classic Hal uh, bold statement is that after 30 days, if you're not 100% happy, we'll come back and we'll retreat your home for free and we'll continue to treat it for free until you tell us that you are happy. That still doesn't make you happy. We'll uh, give you your money back plus an additional $25 for your time and trouble. Now, I wish I could, could be one to say that I've never paid that money back. I've never done it on an, on an initial service, but what I, I kind of extended that. And if somebody wants to quit me because they're not happy, their last service fee, I give it to them. I have paid them as much as a hundred dollars and say, here, you and your husband or wife go out to eat on me. I'm sorry. We couldn't, you know, meet your, make you satisfied. You know, ma, ma, you, you know, I'm sorry. We, we did the best we could do and we couldn't, we couldn't make you happy. I'm sorry. And I give them their money back. So the idea of spending money to acquire the customer to even make them happy because that customer, even they may, may be an ex customer in the future, they're going to say, you know, that guy, he, he did the right thing. 
we, I don't, whatever circumstances were that they weren't happy, they can tell their friends, you know, he did the right thing. And in actuality, another one of Hal's tid, uh, tidbits, I guess, if you will, is, is one of the things that he would say, <laughs> always tell me to do. He said, if you don't have, if you have absolutely nothing else to do to grow your business, he said, you know, Hal and I are, I guess, more kind of old school. I hope everybody knows what a Rolodex is, but I guess you could go through your contact list on your phone. He said, and just start calling old, you know, previous customers. And I have actually, I, I don't know, what's the word? Re, re-signed them, got them as customers again. Just, you know, just call them, talk talk to them, ask them how they've been doing, blah, blah, blah. And you'd be amazed at the number of people that'll say, well, you know, I, I've been needing to call somebody. I've got ants or yellow jackets or whatever the problem is. So that methodology does work if you just call previous customers, talk to them, see how they're doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll never get... You'll never get past the the letter G until you have to leave and go service somebody, <laughs> you know. But something I want to go back to something you just were touching on about uh, <clears throat> giving the money back. You know, we talked about the lifetime value of a pest control customer, and that's why I was willing to pay a lot of money to get one because. In today's world, uh, across the board, if you average it all out, uh, a pest control customer is worth is going to stay with you an average of about 10 years, and they're going to be worth about $6,000 to you over that 10-year period. Now, if you really make them happy and understand the steps that you have to take to motivate them to send you two more customers over that 10 year period. If they just refer you to two other customers. Now that's now that one customer actually became worth uh, $18,000. And so it's incredible how much value there is in a customer. And that's why not only are you should be willing to spend money to get one, but to salvage one, I mean, uh, I, I've seen a lot of PCOs in my time that'll get mad and tell somebody where to go and hang up the phone on them and bang. Not only did they just lose what should be potentially $18,000 worth of business down the road, but they they have that person out there talking bad about them. And, and you know, if, if the person just over the next 10 years cost you several customers i mean the the it's staggering uh how much of an impact that would have on your business without you ever knowing it just by letting one customer get away so when you when you can't satisfy somebody when you can't make them happy because you couldn't get rid of their ant problem or you couldn't get rid of their cockroaches and 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 you get mad and they get they get mad because they feel like they wasted their money. And when you tell them to go somewhere else and they did waste their money because you got their money and you didn't solve their problem. So they feel screwed. And they are screwed. But when you offer to give them back that last service, now and in your case, you give them a hundred dollars to go a, a bonus. Now you're two peas in the same pot. They wasted their time. You wasted your time. They spent money. You gave money back. So now you're both share in the loss equally. You're both partners in the loss. You're both lost together. It wasn't a win for either one of you. And now they kind of look at you subconsciously as a, well, it just didn't work out for us, did it? He took a hit and I took a hit and he, he tried. And the fact that he was honest and, and uh, bought in and bought out 
now they're not they're not going to talk bad about you. They're going to say, you know, I had them, but they're really good people to work with, and they they're honest and all. But well, they, they couldn't fix that problem I had. It was tough, you know, and and uh, maybe they got another company that couldn't, or maybe they that did. But as long as they know that you tried your best and that you they bought into you, and then you you paid your way back out and y'all are on equal ground, it's a whole different mindset, whole, whole different. Uh, even though you didn't solve their bug problem, uh, they consider you honorable and somebody that they would recommend. It's funny how that works. I can't hear you, Mike. <clears throat> well, uh, there's a switch that turns it off, and I should know better. <laughs> At any rate, uh, you know what I'm hearing here, guys, is you're talking about one of the things I hear over and over again is, well, how, how do you promote your business? And you say, they say, well, word of mouth has been working really good for us. Well, the word of the mouth is happy people and, and disgruntled people. They're either saying good things or bad things. They're not saying milk toast things about you. They're either, they either don't like you or they love you. You know, uh, we, we used to have a friend, he says, Love me, hate me. There's no money in the middle. Uh, milk toast opinions don't turn into profits. But, you know, one of the things that uh, that I want to interject here is, uh, one, we've been going 26 minutes, so uh, uh, we've probably got a whole lot more we could talk about, but I want to definitely interject this, is that when you're talking about uh, doing shock and all service of guaranteeing you know, I've actually had people say, well, I don't I don't want to give guarantee I'll give the money back. Well, the truth is we used to know a very small percentage. Of, if you do your job right, a very small percentage of people are going to want their money back. I mean, I think it's hopefully it's a rare. Uh, is it one or two percent of the people ever ask for their money back? I mean, you know, it, it's, oh, it's, it's me. Not, when I offered that guarantee, it was a lot less than one percent. Yeah, I've, I've never had anybody ask for it back. Yeah, ever. Yeah. OK. I, and Dan Kennedy calls that risk reversal. In other words, when you when you put the risk on you and reverse it from them, uh, you build a better word of mouth relationship with those people. And when you respond and you do all the things that Hal talks about in the offline world, in fact, that's why I've got up there, Mister Offline. Hal is is uh, is a student of the offline world before there was an internet, and I'm that knucklehead who said, "Well, Hal, those principles that work offline, they really work online," and that's why Fred. And everybody that listens, Google reviews are those happy people complaining or praising you. And, <laughs> you know, and when you've got five star reviews, people, the the cell phone young generation, in fact, the grandparent, we, we all got these day on cell phones and we look at those five stars and that's that is a, that is online word of mouth. So that's why they're so important. And that's why, you, you know, I see so many people ignoring them, not managing them, not asking for them. So all these things you do in the offline world, there is an equivalent in the online world because, you know, never in the history of, of man has so many computers been in the pockets and purses of human beings. I mean, you know, people look at a cell phone. I'm holding up my cell phone right now. That is not a phone. That is a computer a million times more powerful than the computer that got man on the moon 50 years ago. And it happens to have a phone in it. You know, the phone was the hook to make you buy the damn thing. The, the people that invented it knew that you were connected to, to everything online. You can buy from it. You can uh, communicate. You can take pictures with it and you shoot videos with it. You can do all these crazy things that are online strategies. But if it was just a, a com hey, little mini computer, buy the mini computer and you have to have a separate device for a phone, they knew you'd never buy it. Boy, Steve Jobs was brilliant. I'm going to put my computer, my Apple computer in a phone. I mean, that it just, it, it was a marketing ploy. Uh, if, if they hadn't put phones in these computers, people would have probably never bought them like the way they do. Now, there's more phones on the planet than human beings. There's 9 billion phones in service right now, and there's only 7.5 billion people on the planet. So that's how popular these devices are. And that's why when I work with you, shows you how many of them have been stolen. <laughs> what? I said that shows you how many of them have been stolen. <laughs> I guess. But, but the truth is, is you... Uh, you can't just ignore the uh, uh, offline and you can't ignore the online. It's, it's a yin and a yang, uh, uh, you know, well, I'm only, I don't, I mean, I remember when Hal said, 
and you know, Fred, you probably don't know this. I'll get a computer. I'll get on the internet, Mike, the day you learn to skin a possum. That was a true statement from Hal Coleman. Many, many, many years ago. I will get a computer. I will learn the internet. I will get a website the day, Mike, you learn to skin a possum. Well, guess what? I have yet to skin a possum and Hal now does. Says, when are we going to do our podcast next? We haven't done a podcast in a while. Yeah, I remember when right after Al Gore invented the internet is when you were telling me all that stuff. <laughs> so at any rate, Fred, uh, uh, you know, uh, if there's any online experiences you'd like to share with the audience, I, I, on behalf of my world, since I gave Hal some talk, talking time here, what are some online pluses you've you've experienced and maybe some negatives if you want to share them? Uh, uh well, it, it is extremely important to get, to get the reviews. Uh, Mikey will push the importance of it, how coaches you through how to actually get the reviews. Because uh, th- th- there's little nuances that, you know, I, I, I thought I was had the perfect little script, and Hal informed me that it was absolutely the wrong way to go about it. So we, you know, we change. You you have to, I guess, evolve in that. Uh, more content. Uh, I've been working with Mike for the past, I believe it's a little bit over a year now. Mm-hmm. And we do we do a podcast. We we try to do two every month. Uh, I I thought it was actually a bunch of bullshit, to be <laughs> <laughs> but. I have sold jobs specifically based on individual podcasts that Mike and I have done. And your video, you've done a lot of videos. I have not done a lot of, I have done videos, but not enough to my coach's liking. It's a lot compared to what some people have done. Probably. probably. Uh, But it is extremely important, uh, you know, to, to post content to the internet. Uh, because that the like Mike was saying, the phone is is everybody uses that for their search engine anymore, or, or to search the internet anymore for whatever household service they might need. Uh, you know, Mike, Mike and Mike and how both the, the I guess one point that I need or want people to understand is it's not a one hour a month and you're done. I have no problem picking up the phone and calling Mike or Hal. I've never felt like they, you know, specifically or intentionally didn't answer my question. If I have a question, I 99% of the time they'll answer. Uh, I think the only time Hal's ever not answered me, I think he was hunting or fishing. <laughs> yeah, well, it might have been. might have been. You know, other I'll, than that, I'll, he, uh, but seriously, where I, where 99 percent of the hunt, time. Hmm? Where I turkey hunt up in North Georgia, there's not very good. It's right. in the middle of the mountain. Right. not good access up there. So. No, he, he's right. He's right. But the, they're very responsive, and it's not, you know, if it takes, Hal has met with me. Uh, one month, I know, I believe he met with me three times trying to get, you know, my mind right. And it was never, you know, it was never a a uh, a complaint from him. Uh, you, you know, they're willing to do whatever they whatever's necessary, whatever you feel like is necessary for them to do. Pretty much to get you go to get you up and going. If you work right. with us, you're going to grow the business, whether you want to or not. I mean, I, I, how many times have I really ticked you off through the years? Well, he's pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> several times, yeah. several yeah. times. Yeah. Well, that, that's Elmo resisting change. Uh, you know, let's right. look at, look at coach. I mean, you know, Tiger Woods has had a coach all of his life. Tom Brady has had a coach all of his life. Uh, famous athletes, actors, uh, music musicians have had uh, coaching is just so integral, and and it's really come into its own over the past. Uh, 10 years, really, you know, people to realize there's coaches, they're life coaches. They're coaches who, uh, for people who can't get their careers going, they're coaches for people who can't get their personal relationships uh, to work. They're coaches for people who 
uh, to keep them physically in shape, to build a better body and a better better health and to lose weight in their spiritual coaches, uh, just like they were football coaches, basketball coaches, wrestling coaches, golf coaches. Uh, but coaching, uh, I've hired a coach myself, you know, uh, two or three years ago to help me build a more valuable coaching business. That's what this coach did. This coach coached coaches. And so I, I, I spent a lot of money and, and, and it was well worth it because I built a better coaching business for my clients. And so, uh, you can do it on your own or you can get a coach, but the people that I mentioned like Tom Brady and, and Tiger Woods and, uh, and those people, where would they be today? if they had never had a coach. Yeah. Let, let me, let me sum this are. up a, a little bit here because guys, we're, we're, uh, we could probably talk a whole lot longer, but we're probably going to have to wind it up here pretty soon. But let me, let me tell you in the offline world, you got to do a great job. You got to have a, a, an ethical business. You got to deliver over deliver what you promise. You got to make it right. And that's in the real world before there was an internet. And, but in the real world, you what you say, the, you know, as Mark Twain said, the difference between lightning and lightning bug is is what well, you he say. said. The, the, the difference between the almost right word and the right word is like the difference between a lightning bug and lightning. Right. Exactly. What I'm saying is what you say in the offline real world to people standing on their front porch, on the telephone, at a networking meeting, at a chamber of commerce, what you say can mean the difference between getting a customer or not. Now, when it comes to the Internet, the Internet is you electronically 24-7 worldwide in the pockets of everybody's phone. So, in other words, those what you say on your websites. I mean, I, I fight with people. In fact, Fred, you told me you have web developers calling you all the time, telling you how, oh, yeah. how they'd yeah. make you a better website. Oh, the website you got is ugly. Oh, it looks dated. All oh, this other baloney that that we know do, I don't think you've lost one customer that said my gosh your website's not as pretty as XYZ's website have you <laughs> no nobody's told me that anyway yeah if you ever lose a piece of business because of your they said your website was ugly you need to tell me and we'll fix it we'll figure out why but the truth is uh they're only trying to sell you another website to make money for them they don't really care about you but we care about your business and what you say on that website is way more important than, than all the other stuff that the web designers love to sell you. So um, what I'm trying to get across is you got to have what Powell and I call response triggers, guarantees, bold promises. And the best way to talk to people while you sleep is through the power of video. That's why we do the these uh, live stream podcasts is we're archiving content that somebody someday may see this, hear this, and get inspired to make the changes that you've made. So that's why in the online world, video, response triggers, uh, the perfect words, saying the right things mean the difference between a buyer and a back button. You know, we used to say on the Internet, the most popular button on the Internet is the back button. The, uh, oh, I found this. This is not for me. And then the other and that's called conversion. And that's one of the things I try to teach, uh, teach you, Fred, and teach all the clients I work with is, we got to make conversion content, C content that convinces somebody that you're the person to call. And then the other thing is, and this is what I, I love. Well, I need SEO. I need I need search engine optimization. Well, they're just saying words. What they're saying is they need targeted prospects who don't know who you are to find you. And and in my opinion, uh, we're doing you with you and and. And if I recall the beginning of this podcast, you said you've doubled your business over the last four years. Isn't that true? Yeah, over double. Oh, yeah. what, what is your growth rate right now com compared to this time last year? I don't know the answer to that, but last year we did uh, 365. Oh, I thought you said this month you were up like. If, if. If if what I don't sell anything else between now and the end of the year, just do our recurring, just get all of our recurring stops caught. We'll be at it's at, right at five hundred and forty eight thousand. And so we you're, right now, I you said you're up fifty up fifty percent from where you were. 
Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. So well, listen. Well, let me let me finish my statement here, Hal. I got a coaching call coming up myself here soon. So, all right. Well, let me uh, let me finish this, wind this up because to, to, you know you and I are very personally involved with Fred. Um, but paid advertising, the Google AdWords that we do with Fred, that's paying for itself. It's bringing strangers who are looking on their cell phones, and seventy five percent to eighty percent of the people that find you, Fred, um, on a phone, are, I mean, they're finding you in Google AdWords on a phone. And when we take that ad and we direct it to a page that has response triggers, that can be a salesperson for you while you sleep. And that's one of the things. That's why content's so important. That's why advertising is so important. And and at the end, bottom end of the day, if this advertising and this coaching and all the things that you're spending money on makes you a bigger profit, that's what we're all about. It, wouldn't you say the things that we're doing for you is paying for itself and, and, and having profit left over. Yes no, or no? No, no doubt. Okay. Yes. No and doubt. That, that's the struggle we have. You know, I have I have so many people tell me how, and I'm sure you have too. Oh, I just don't know if I can afford this. You can't afford not to do the right things. You know, I had we had another client that I can't believe it. He was spending $60,000 a year on search engine optimization and web management. $5,000 a month, $60,000 a year. And couldn't show one customer for it. I hear those horror stories every day. And we're not spending anywhere near that because it's knowing what to do. And in fact, I have a speech called A Thousand Little Things. It's not any one thing. It's a thousand little things. A thousand thousand things Hal tells you to do. A thousand things I tell you to do. And it's being willing to do those things. And what I'm proud of you, Fred, is that even though you say you're an introvert, you're on the camera. You're talking to people. You ain't that much of an introvert. You're a, you're a great entrepreneur who was willing to try things that weren't comfortable, that made you comfortable. And I'm proud of you. And I, I wish you nothing but success the rest of your life. And I'm, I, it's a pleasure to work with you. I, in fact, you and I usually go over because we talk about things that have nothing to do with business. Well, well, you're, you're right. We do. <laughs> it's because you're a, you're a good person and you deserve to be successful. And I can't wait to hear the day you break a million. And I, I think that's in your future. You keep on the path here. So, Hal, um, I know you got a coaching client. One of the things I do want to say uh, is that we are brought to you by our free book. Uh, Hal, oh, yeah. Hal you, can, you, can actually, book. you can actually still get that book free right now. Uh, and uh, if you get it and it's free, and if you and if you read the whole book and you don't think it was worth what you paid for it, I'll give you a refund. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> But uh, and uh, listen, if anybody's listening to this podcast would like to find out more about Mike and more about myself and our coaching program, uh, you can simply give me a call at 770-993-0004. I'll be glad to set up a one hour coaching session with you. I'll send you a questionnaire to fill out prior to it so that. I don't have to spend the whole hour asking you all the questions in the questionnaire. I'll already have a lot of information about your business, made some notes and, and found you some uh, low hanging fruit that you can go out and, and uh, increase your sales with. And it won't cost you anything to have that hour session. And at the end of the hour, if you want to know more about my coaching, I'll be happy to tell you about it. And if you're not, I won't, but uh, Mike, you offer the same thing, I believe. Absolutely. In fact, I, I'm talking to somebody today. In fact, we had a question, Hal, here early. Uh, i got to show this question, but my phone number is 770-826-3662. You call me. I answer my phone. Uh, anytime somebody calls, I, I answer it because that daggone computer is always with me. And uh, uh, I love this, Hal. you got to see this. Uh, this guy uh, with a landscaping company says, do you take clients that haven't made a pest control business, but working on the side, they're looking to leave and start my own company. And I answered them. That's what they need to do. Call Hal at his number, call him at my number. And, um, you know, we, we love helping. In fact, we, one of our best, uh, uh, case studies is a guy who started from the beginning, uh, Mike Warren, and, uh, he didn't even have a name for his pest control business. We named his business, he oh, started, didn't even have any pest control experience. None. Yeah. He didn't know the difference between an American cockroach and a bed bug. And he <laughs> had no licenses, no certifications, no background in it. He just thought 
it would be the kind of business he would enjoy. So we helped him find a licensed operator for DCO. We helped him name his business. Uh, we helped him locate and find his first registered employee. And, uh, and he went out on the first pest control job he'd ever been out on in his life. Well, and, and I can't thank our good friend and, uh, um, uh, uh, amazing transformation from in the last few years from faithpestcontrol.com. Go check out faithpestcontrol.com, guys. It's real easy. In fact, if you Google faith pest control, Fred, because of what we've done, is number one in Google in the world for those three words, faith pest control. Three words, and you can find him. That's all you got to remember. Fred Talley, thank you so much for being on our show today. Um, this thing will live on the internet forever. So if there's anything you don't like what you said, you're stuck with it, buddy. It's <laughs> well, I hope it was helpful to somebody. Uh, very it was helpful. helpful information you shared. And folks, thank you for listening to this episode of Pest Control Marketing Live. We'll see you next time. Hal Coleman has been active in the pest control industry for over 40 years, including owning and operating his own successful pest control business for 18 years. He now devotes his time to helping other PCOs and other WCOs double, triple, and even quadruple their businesses faster than they ever imagined. Be sure to check out his website, PestControlMarketer.com. For more information about Hal's coaching program, you can reach him at 770-993-0004 or email him Hal at HalColeman.com. Mike Stewart is known as the Internet Audio and Video Guy. Since the birth of the Internet, Mike has been showing small business owners how to get more new customers, increase their sales, and grow their businesses online using audio and video, now with iPhones and Android phones. For more information about Mike's coaching program and his online training courses, visit MikeStewartCoaching.com or email him Mike at InternetAudioGuide.com. Google Pest Control Marketer Grow your business like never before. Call 770-993-0004.